This is Ben Television. My name is Kayo Deokundamisi. It's your program, Politics with K.O. Thursdays on this channel, Sky 182. Don't miss the debate by Nigerians and friends of Nigeria on issues surrounding Nigeria from around the world. My name is Kayo De Okindamisi. Politics. I do not believe that Politics should be driven by a survival of the fittest agenda. I do think... Uh, this is Ekiti and I'm back here again. It's, um, I was last year, two, 2003, two years ago, and it was more or less like a construction site, more or less. What has changed in two years, God no fire me. Well, it's still pretty much a construction site. It's just that we have fewer projects left to complete. And as we enter 2014, which is an election year, it's more about completing all of those projects you saw that were just starting off then. If you go right on top of the hill, you can see that the government house is being roofed. Uh, the Warm Spring Resort is fully uh, operational now. The Moribond Erie, the Bricks Factory is now ready to roll, the uh, quarries in Igbemo has gone into joint venture partnership with Chinese uh, quarry operators. And that's beside all those roads you saw. Mm. Um, if you recall when you came, Ekiti was really difficult in terms of road network. Someone, someone described it as a post-conflict um, in that it looked more like a post-conflict um, town. Well, you, you could then. say that it, it, it looked very much like a post-conflict zone. It's like going to Freetown after the peace accord or going to Jaffna in uh, Sri Lanka in the immediate aftermath of the decimation of the Tamils uh, 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 process. What happened here was clearly a remarkable mm. improvement on what it used to be. Everybody who came to Ekiti pre-October 2010 mm. and who's been to Ekiti two, three years after, they've just simply marveled at the sheer level of road network improvement. We've, connect, we've, we've connected most communities. We've either constructed or reconstructed or rehabilitated 754 kilometers of road. And that's beside the roads that have sprung up in communities where we have the five kilometer per year initiative. So virtually every community you go into in Ikiti now has a brand new asphalted road. So it's not like, because one of the things I observe in the country is governors concentrate on the state capitals and neglect the, the neighboring areas, so... Not at all. This is one place where you go to, and I have just completed a tour, for example, a tour of the 132 communities across the length and breadth of Ikiti. And in those visits, I commissioned 75 projects in different communities. And projects ranging their own self-help projects. Well, we have what is akin to almost a community government here. We decided, in addition to every other thing we're doing at the state level, at the local government level, that communities also have a right to take ownership of their own developmental initiatives and decide on projects that are of priority to them. Government then fund that, not do the project. We fund the town's unions and leave it to them to implement those projects that they've identified themselves. These are self-help projects chosen by the communities, implemented by the communities, monitored by the communities, and owned by the communities. 
if you're going to a lot of capital projects, and if, correct me if I'm wrong, it is about the second poorest state in the country. Well, Where if, you, if you're from? looking at poor in terms of Naira and Kobo, material poor, yes, you're right. We are the second to the lowest on the Federation Revenue Ladder, yeah. uh, Federation Account Revenue Ladder. But when you have planned and you're prudent and you're innovative, you can always manage with even the little you have. So it's not like you're indebting generations yet unborn with loans and... No, 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 no. That allegation has even come. For example, we went to the capital market. In 2011, when you came, we have just been to the capital market and borrowed 20 billion naira. But the interesting thing about that was since that December 2011, we pay 400 million every month. If you calculate 400 million every month, that is 4 billion every 10 months. So that covers the, the loan. So I, I, I would, one interesting thing I would want to acknowledge is your program on uh, social welfare scheme. The social scheme, yes. The social scheme. Mm. I think it's on the elderly. That's on the elderly. On the elderly. Where we, we have that specifically on the elderly. Yeah. We, 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 well, you know, I have no apologies about coming from a progressive, ideological, social democratic wing of politics. I do not believe that politics should be driven by a survival of the fittest agenda. No. I do think social Darwinism would destroy all of us if we pursue the end justifies the means politics. So, how does so this to that extent, we have a focus on ensuring that we empower the vulnerable and the weak. And one of the most neglected segment of the vulnerable in our country today, which used to benefit from the old extended family system that has now crumpled, is the elderly. They're left literally abandoned, not catered for, not assisted in any way. And what we decided to do was to just pay a, a, what we consider a decent living wage for them. It's not a lot of money. We pay 5,000 naira per elderly. So if you have two elderly in a family, yeah. mother, father, they'll get 10,000 naira. So what's the age range? The age range is 65. And above. 65 years and above. But it's also not all the 65 years old and above that we pay. We have a mechanism for assessing who qualifies for this. First, you must not be on uh, pension scheme and the only way you get on the pension scheme is that you're retired so you have a certain level of uh, uh, decent livelihood in order to retire from an establishment so we don't concentrate on those we also don't give it to people who we know have children in a position to cater for them my mother for example when she was alive was not entitled most of my officials cannot justify payment of these to their uh, uh, fathers and mothers. So we, we, we narrow it down that way. So it really goes to the poorest of the poor. And it's not just a monetary component. We also have a food bank that supplies food to the elderly who cannot really cook for themselves. How do you gauge someone who is an equity indigent or non equity indigent to benefit from this scheme? As in people from outside equity or elderly, if they are resident there, would they be entitled to? We don't have a discriminatory uh, approach to policy because this is, a, this is a scheme that is backed by law. We have a social security benefits scheme law. And what that does is define the criteria for qualification. To qualify, you only needed to have lived in Ekiti okay. for three years okay. as a resident. You were a human rights campaigner before coming into government. The Freedom of Information Act is one important campaign that has been going on for quite a while. That I was part of. Yeah, you were part of that campaign. Now, in Ekiti State, has it been domesticated? Ekiti is the only state, as a matter of fact, in the entire federation 
that has domesticated the freedom of information law. So if I apply, no other if state. I apply for information, I want to know what government fired me at for dinner last night. Or I'm just trying. yeah, I know you're just. You know, as in, if I want very important uh, information about government agencies in the digital state, is that possible to get without any information? It is possible. In fact, without even asking, you can get. Our website is rated as the number one state website in the entire country. And this is partly because it's very interactive. You can access information. Our state budget is there. We have all the state laws. We have procurement contracts all loaded on our website. So, but if you are not satisfied with what you even get there, you want more details, you only need to apply. Uh, so, so are you confident that Governor Fire Me had done well enough? You know, just take yourself outside. Uh, just say, okay, can, can you confidently say, I have done well enough for my people to deserve to be re-elected as governor? Well, there's no question that I without being immodest, I've done considerably well in terms of the promise I made to the people. And, 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 and the task I give people is very simple. I say, please take my inaugural speech yeah. on October 16, 2010, and read it paragraph by paragraph. And mark it against done, not done, 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 not done, you would almost go away with more than just an appreciation that this is a governor that has served his people diligently and to the best of his ability. Not that we've done everything. I mean, the work of government is never ending. It's never finished. But even the ones that we have not completed, the trajectory is clear. Our eyes remain focused on the future, particularly in the area of jobs, functional jobs for our young people. That's and I improve the quality of health care and I improve tourism and agriculture. The only thing that can bring it out will be job creation. Will be job creation. And not just job creation. Functional job presence in the state. If, if that, so that's a focus. If that is the case. How come you have someone within your party challenge you uh, wanting to run against you? I'm talking about Barrister Okoyemi, Senator Okoyemi, uh, is it Barrister Okoyemi Bamidele. If someone within your party could come out to say, you know what, I'm going to run against my own sitting governor. What's wrong with that? Well, in a democracy, uh, you can legislate against ambition. And ambition is not necessarily predicated on non-performance because it is one place where the evidence is overwhelming. As a matter of fact, in fairness to Okwemi Bamidele, he has never said, I've never read him anywhere or heard him anywhere say, Governor Faimi has not performed. I just want to run. Do you have a problem with him running? What is wrong with running? We've never had any problem, problem with anyone running. As a matter of fact, he never, to the best of my knowledge, approached any segment of the party, either at his ward level mm. or at the state level, that he wanted to run. Then why so he was running in newspaper while not running in accordance with the processes laid out in the constitution of the party. So as we speak, there are no official documents indicating that he was interested in running. He has never formally, anywhere, written or notified the party that he wanted to run. As a matter of fact, the only thing he has done consistently is to say the party has no right to endorse anyone. And I've always said to people that apart from being a Democrat, I'm also a stickler for processes. Endorsement is not primary. Mm. Anybody can endorse yeah. anyone in the world. And the fact that the big wigs, so to speak, mm. according to him, the leading light in the party have endorsed him, so it's going to be mm. against him. I also cite history mm. for him. I said, 
Anyone who knows the history of the parties that are left of center would recall that Chief Obafemi Awolowo was very fond of Chief J.S. Olawo. He openly stated that Chief Olawo was his choice. Despite his endorsement of Chief Olawo in Quara State, 1983, a primary was held thrice. Cornelius Adebayo defeated Chifolaoni thrice and became the candidate of the party, in spite of Chifolaoni's endorsement of Chifolaoni. Here, in the old Ondo state of which Ekiti was a part, the darling of Chifolaoni, that most people knew, you could argue that Chifolaoni was almost like Okwemi Bamidele was to uh, Bola Metinubu. But when it came to the primaries, he lost the primary against the incumbent, Chief Ajashi, and left the party. Of course, Chief Aurora washed his hands off him, in spite of his very close relationship with Chief Aurora. So I think it's just... Uh, um, a very adept way mm. of propagandizing. Mm. No record anyway. And I challenge your professor Yemibadele to say where he has applied to run. But we have all these allegations of intolerance on your part. And the, you know, his supporters, one of his supporters was killed and you just, you just kept mute. There were no statement, at least at the beginning from from you. I think I even wrote an article asking why uh, uh, someone known as a human rights campaigner in government would not immediately wade into this. You wrote a misguided article, which I read and I felt, well, based on information available to you, you wrote and you said that didn't happen. What you didn't know at the time you were saying that was at the very minute I heard what transpired. I contacted not just the community but the family. And the community led by the KBS even went to the family. But people were playing politics with that. Blocking the family from receiving the governor. So you do not sanction any violence against your opponent? Anyone who knows me and who knows my track record, even when I was an underdog, I had no truck with violence. And the evidence remains overwhelming that even this matter you're talking about, we have not gotten to the end of it. There is something that I'm sure you know in politics which would parade itself yeah. as an underdog, but actually trigger mm. violence. You're, you're in a very unique position because in 2014, you're going to have your own election. Mm -hmm. And then 2015 is going to be a general election for the yeah. country. And you've been a very important, uh, you, you're part of the negotiation to get the APC and get other governors. You seem to be doing, your party, seem, former ACN and CPC, seems to be doing a good job of converting PDP members into uh, APC. Now, what's the, going to be the difference between APC and PDP if you have majority of PDP members defecting into the, the progressive party, so to say? Well, you know, I, I, I have a cause to address this issue because there is a, a false analysis that goes on out there that there's no difference between APC and PDP. PDP. And the demonstration of that is the way we're bringing in mm. us to our PDP members into APC. Mm. First, we are not on an ideological competition. Let's not kid ourselves. This nation needs rescue first. believe that politics should be driven by a survival of the fittest agenda. I do think
This is Ben Television. My name is Kayo Deokundamisi. It's your program, Politics with K.O. Thursdays on this channel, Sky 182. Don't miss the debate by Nigerians and friends of Nigeria on issues surrounding Nigeria from around the world. My name is Kayo Dekundamisi. 